Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hero Movie Podcast, your greatest source for superhero movie discussion in the multiverse. I'm your host, Adam Portress, and joining me today, he was just hoping somebody would Joe Pesci, that spider kid. Sweet Sean's a Kovacs from the internet. <laughs> You're not wrong about that. And also, don't believe your parents when they tell you that music used to be better. Just listen to that opening <laughs> song. <laughs> And he was so excited. He thought Jason Momoa was going to be in this movie. Bruce Leslie. I'm a prickly pear. The same as last time, only a little bit greener. Oh, we're all green with envy if you've got to uh, go out to the theater and uh, actually be able to sit in there. Because I don't know what it was like for you boys. It was a uh, jam-packed like a sardine can up in mine. We had a very sparse crowd, but, but we saw it Saturday night, not Friday. Yeah, me as well. It was not. It was not busy. Well, the the box office says it was busy enough to win over the weekend. And uh, will it be the next biggest giant feature film of all time? Were we all so smart to wait twelve years for this sequel? We'll see. We'll see about all of it. <laughs> Has anybody ever told James Cameron that every movie you make doesn't have to be the most expensive movie ever made? No, but it does. <laughs> no, but it do. <laughs> He does I, I've got it. a I've got a theory that James Cameron is basically just Neil Breen with money. <laughs> <laughs> his his laptops actually work. That James Cameron. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what happens when you give an old man a whole bunch of money in uh, eight bajillion years worth of time. What what happens? But before we do all that, we do want to say a giant thank you to the people that support us over at patreon.com slash HMP. Those awesome people get pre-show, post-show, Dinger Zone. And on this week's Dinger Zone, we talk all about the DC shakeup. Holy moly. So much things going on with the uh, James Gunn's in. Henry Cavill is out. Oh, it's cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria. But uh, we're talking about that over at the Dinger Zone. And you could be like our new producer, uh, Marty B., who's coming at that $5 level. Sean, what do we got for Marty this week? No, we're going to stray from what we said we would start doing from this point forward, which is not bring up the person's last name. But when your last name is Bills, it's <laughs> impossible not to bring that up. Your name is Marty Bills. You have the potential to have one of the greatest nicknames of all time Just when your last name hustler, is Bill. Hustler, anything. There's so many ways it can go. Well, you got to go with the Wu Tang when it comes to your last name being Bills. Cash <laughs> rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. So, Marty Bills, your HMP nickname from this point forward is the Wu Tang. Wow, that's a big one. It's big. That is impressive. Congratulations, Mr. Wu-Tang. Oh, man. Put that on a business card and give it out to every person you know. That's... <laughs> I used to be called Young MC, but now they just call me MC. <laughs> now they just call mm -hmm. me a, a Grandpa mm -hmm. MC. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. If you would like to be like the Wu-Tang, oh, man, what a great But you're still wishing that someone could cure your lonely condition. <laughs> on a mission. Head on down to patreon.com slash HMP. Support this here program, and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, big, big, big shout-outs coming to you guys all in the uh, the new year here and everything. And uh, we'll talk about what I want what I want from you, because not only are you guys uh, helping support the show, you're helping kind of uh, create some content and stuff as well. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. But let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is the trailer for Avatar The Way of Water. I know you think I'm crazy. Not lie on those big rocks. But I feel her. I hear her heartbeat. She's so close. So what does her heartbeat sound like? Mm. 
mighty. We cannot let you bring your war here. Outcast. That's all they see. I see you. The way of water connects all things. Before your birth. And after your death. This is our home! I need you with me. And I need you to be strong. That was the trailer for Avatar The Way of Water. You know what time it is. It's time for Bruce's comic book connection. Well, Bruce, what do we got? In order to control myself, I must first accept myself by going with and not against my nature. That's a quote from one Bruce Lee, who thought that uh, the way to be successful in life and in your, your your, your, your kung fu combats is to be like water, and to follow the way of water. Because nothing is weaker than water, but when it attacks something hard or resistant, then nothing withstands it and nothing will alter its way. The rivers and seas are lords of a hundred valleys. This is because their strength is in lowliness. They are kings of them all. So it is that perfect master wishing to lead them he follows. Thus, though he is above them, he follows. Thus, though he is above them, men do not feel him to be an injury. And since he will not strive, none strive with him. And water finds a solution to a problem without force or conflict and teaches us to work in harmony with our environment instead of against it. So openness is the key here. And instead of, you know, fighting against change or putting up a fight against change, maybe we are a little open-minded to it. And those are all quotes that I found that weren't related to Avatar when I searched for The Way of Water. <laughs> and there's no comic book, so I give you guys a little <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> Your best one yet. <laughs> None of those were quotes written by me. Well, if that wasn't enough, let me sell everybody on this over decade in the making sequel because this sucker's got everything. We open up with an hour long last time on Avatar, and that that's only kind of a joke. Uh, we got Jake Selly now with 5,000% more acting. Neytiri is back, and she doesn't have to carry the whole movie this time. Characters you thought were dead, not in a James Cameron movie, baby. Bing, bang, boom, Sigourney Weaver and Stephen Lang are dead, and they've both decided to act this time around, which was nice. Uh, but if you thought James Cameron turned a new leaf and is only directing good acting, how wrong you were. Edie Falco comes in in the most embarrassing role of her career. <laughs> and that's saying something if you're familiar with her filmography. Uh, my God. Uh, but never you mind that. We got soaring through the eye on sky dragon birds. We got swimming through the ocean on dragon fish. Uh, we got catfish whales with tribal tattoos. Okay, sure. Uh, crazy sea lives, kids being kids, mech suits, spider robots, which oddly the kid named Spider never pilots. Oh yeah, there's a <laughs> white kid named Spider who has dreadlocks and is the progeny of Stephen Lang's character from the first movie, who is now in the body of an avatar from a convicted felon, or some such nonsense that James Cameron came up. You expected at this point, though. Kate Winslet still looking kind of hot as a fish lady? I think I might have a problem. Uh... <laughs> We've got Earth, Fire, Wind, Water. That's right. This counts as a Captain Planet episode and community service. You've spent nearly three and a half hours with this movie and walk away with, well, we'll see. Uh, this movie has everything, or or does it? That was great, Adam. That was Good job. great. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, let's talk so about the first Avatar. Let's talk about the yeah. first Avatar movie and our kind of thoughts on it, because it was quite some time ago at this point. Do you Question guys remember it at all? Yeah, I was going to say question number one, roundtable style. When is the last time that we've seen Avatar? 
Because for me, it's been like since it was in theaters. Me too. Uh, I had watched it. I think I watched it at least twice in the theater, maybe a third time. It's one of those that like like episode one, you kind of kept going back to going, am I missing something? Is something going on? Like, I, I feel like I should like I liked it well enough, but it wasn't like I wasn't seeing what everyone else kind of saw. And then, oh, like, I, I, bu- I bought it on Blu-ray, watched it maybe once or twice on Blu-ray, maybe. But then recently, just before this, uh, like, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I watched an hour of Avatar every night uh, leading up to uh, this new movie. Because <laughs> I had to try to remember what this movie was about and uh, all the characters and whatnot, but you didn't have to. Uh, you're, you're right. You didn't have to because they're going to do a good job of reminding you of what's important. I did remember Stephen Lang but mainly because I remembered his campaign to be cable <laughs> like more than I remembered him in the, <laughs> in avatar. But I was like, who is that guy? Oh, he's the guy from avatar. That's how I knew the Stephen Lang. Okay. And, now uh, hold on real quick. Looking back just on account of Stephen Lang is cable or, uh, or Josh Brolin is cable. Oh, well, if the choice is Stephen Lang or Josh Brolin, I have to go with Brolin just cause it's a different kind of actor altogether. But Stephen Lang versus a whole lot of other people, I would definitely pick Steve. You can Lang. say good. It's okay. We're on a podcast. Yeah, it's, yeah. No one's listening. <laughs> you can say he's just a better actor. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I like. I wanted to kind of get reaccustomed with with this whole Avatar thing to try to remember what was it. But um, you, you don't necessarily need to. But man, I, I got to admit to you, rewatching that movie did not instill a lot of hope for for this go around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Now I want to tell you, I remember liking Avatar like the way you like angel food cake when you're a kid. It's like, man, this angel food cake is good. But it's also good because it's the only like sweet thing you happen to have in the house that weekend. You know what I mean? Like, like I really enjoyed Avatar, but it was in one eye and out the other. <laughs> you know, like you see it and then that's it. I wasn't crying for more lore or a whole franchise to be built. And, and uh, the only reason that I think I, my opinion of it faded as time went on is because there was just better franchise stuff coming out. And I think that it really benefited a lot from James Cameron's uh, technical improvements in 3d, but then that doesn't have its appeal now, you know, cause uh, you could only see something for the first time once. Yeah. I, I remember seeing the movie. It, it wasn't something that I thought, like, wow, that's pretty great. You know, like, like most people uh, who weren't children when this movie came out, uh, you know, I saw it and I was like, you know, th- this, th- this reminds me just too much of, um, of uh, dances with wolves. Like it really felt like that. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Dances with space wolves is what people right. are calling it. Right. And you know, I and do you're my generation fern gully. That also oh, that yeah, also like comes into play because it was very much like uh, we're we're killing the tree and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, poke on his fern gully, all that. But the you know the positive things about it were oh he's built out something original and new here, which we were even screaming about ten years ago. Well, how come there's no originality in movies anymore? I mean that that that's something that's been happening for the last forty years. And you know he had something new and something different, and for that you know like he should be lauded for that. And he was, and it's one of those things too, where like, for me, there was nothing to hold on to. I I basically only remembered Stephen Lang in the mech suit that looked remarkably like Ripley's mech suit from aliens. (laughs) Yeah. And, and the, the fact that the, the main actor of this movie had one of the worst American accents I had, I had heard in a, in a major <laughs> motion picture. Uh, I'm assuming you're not talking about Sigourney Weaver there. Well, no, <laughs> here's the thing though. Not for nothing. Sigourney Weaver, like just sleepwalked through that first movie. At least she in, sure did in this movie. You know at least she's, she had every she's right acting. to, I'll be honest. She had every right. To. Yeah. She wasn't doing anything. I swear to you. She was just like, listen, James, I will do this role, but I am allowed to smoke cigarettes on screen. 
And like, like, cause, <laughs> like, there's no reason that that character in this weird futuristic setting would like get right out of like a, a cryopod and ask for a cigarette outside and, of Sigourney Reaver's just like, bro, I just need a smoke while I'm working. And, Can you just make it happen and then we'll write it down? And you know, having Sigourney Weaver in the movie makes me think, okay, James Cameron, maybe he's doing like, this is a reflection on my greatest hits. So we got the aliens mechs. Yeah. We definitely got references to aliens. We have a boat taking forever to sink. <laughs> with yeah. people on board it. So we got a little Titanic there. Yeah. So there was part of me that was really waiting for Stephen Lang's character to switch sides and become a hero. And Spider was going to be like the, the what was that kid's name from uh, Terminator 2? Eddie Furlong? Yeah, he was going to be like the Eddie Furlong and suddenly Stephen Lang's clone was going to be like the Terminator 2 version of the Terminator. But that didn't quite happen. Not quite. It would have been I, cool if it did. It would be like, hey, James Cameron, you'd be a lot cooler if you did. Here's the, uh, James Cameron himself said, listen, if I'm going to rip off anybody, I'm going to rip off the best. And, <laughs> exactly. And ultimately, ultimately, watching Avatar had been the second, and, and, and seeing people's response to that movie, it's the second time in my life where I felt like I was taking crazy pills. Where it was like everyone thinks this movie is amazing, except for me. Apparently, like I, it's I, it's, it's not that I hated hmm. it. It's it's like one of the rides at Universal Studios or Disney. It's like you, you know the ride. Some rides have a better story than others, but it's all about the the experience, the visual experience. You're seeing, sure. you know, like the Harry Potter ride. People love it, but it's not because the story it tells is complex. For me, seeing that first Avatar, and part of what I enjoyed it is it was kind of like you put on your 3D glasses and you got a quality of 3D I'd never seen before in my life. And it was like I'm going on an amusement park ride that lasts three hours. Like, I didn't know anybody's name. You know, I mean, I knew like the actor names of a couple of people and I could not help but remember Unobtainium because, yeah, I mean, come on. Because yeah. everyone in the theater laughed when they said it. And like, because <laughs> it was just like, it, it felt like, Come on, what a crock. What what the same thing <laughs> happened like, in that Poseidon Adventure remake when they said yeah. Rogue Wave, everybody in the office uh, everybody in the in the entire theater just giggled. They were just like Rogue <laughs> Wave. That's the stupidest thing ever. Like like even though that's a real thing that people they were just like no, no. No. <laughs> Unobtainium really feels like a placeholder name that they're like, screw it, I'm too tired, it's getting late. Yeah, we'll too- come up with yeah. something cool later, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and he doesn't. It, it does doesn't. feel like that. No, no choice. By the way, rewatching that first movie, I just look at all of the choices that like I'm like half of that movie could have been fixed in casting. I think because oh, like really? Giovanni Ribisi's not good for that role. You know who would have been amazing? Sam Worth, not Sam Worthington. That's the, the other dumb guy. <laughs> oh wow, guess. just Sam. It's like Ru- Eddie Murphy. This movie was Sam Worthington. <laughs> Sam Worthington's in every role. Sam Rockwell is what I meant to say. They both okay, have. Sam. Yeah, I agree. Better choice. Sam Rockwell would have destroyed that role. Rab- Sam Rockwell, like, though, but-, but with Sam Rockwell, it's like everything that Sam Rockwell does, which is and and this is a a testament to the man as a, as an actor. Yeah. Every time he's in something, you want to see what that dude's doing. Yeah. And and every time you're not on Sam Rockwell, you're like, I wonder what Sam Rockwell's doing right now. It's kind of the <laughs> Iron Man 2 problem. <laughs> yes. Where how come I'm not seeing a lot more Sam Rockwell? How come we're seeing how come how come we're seeing all of this garbage that I don't care about at all? I want to see what Sam Rockwell's character is doing. That's why I can't watch reruns of the dating game. Because I keep wanting to get the Sam Rockwell version instead of the real guy. <laughs> I uh, the gong show ah uh, whatever it's all the same thing to him did it's, it start on the dating game though have you seen confessions of a dangerous mind i have seen confessions of a dangerous mind because i thought it started on the dating game and they would put people on dates in cities where chuck barris needed to go kill people because his first job in show business was a chaperone for the dates on the dating game i don't remember that oh man if it's not true I apologize, but I'm also proud of myself for for getting that confused. Because hey, <laughs> the the Gong Show, the Gong Show, the prizes would be an all expenses paid trip to East Berlin. Yeah. Okay. I thought that it, for some reason I'm con- conflating things. That's all. Or, Let's or get back I could to Avatar. Be. <laughs> yeah. Like, I watched television once in the '60s. <laughs> Let's settle that debate once and for all, kids. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so. When when it came to Avatar, it was one of those moments like I had with Lord of the Rings where I was like, I, this is one of the things I'm just never going to be into. And like, I, I liked it well enough. I don't I don't outwardly hate it, but, I, you know, it's just not my jam. 
uh, th- that first Avatar movie. And, and, and I'm guessing that you guys kind of are there as well, where it's yeah, like, yeah, it's it's like the for me, it's more like it's the guy that is everybody's buddy, but nobody's best friend. That's Avatar. Mm. The thing with Avatar with the first movie that I was really afraid of, and now the first the, the first one is written and directed by James Cameron solely, right? <clears throat> And uh, I'm glad he got some help with this second film because this last one, the first one, it is you can take any line in that and put it in a cheesy action movie trailer and it makes sense. Every line. They're all yeah. there, save for specific Navi, like, you know, tra- non translated words or whatever. Every single bit of that dialogue is the most cliched 80s bull crap. It made me like really it, it made me mad at James Cameron's and, writing. It was so well, egregiously bad. I mean, even at his best, my opinion of James Cameron's writing has always been he takes uh, a paper thin story and makes it seem like it's more than it is, which is a skill to have. Mm-hmm. Yes. But but you know, I, I <laughs> he needs even at his best it wouldn't hurt for him to have a little help on his writing, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And he also can you know, he's more of a, a big picture writer. Yes. Where the things that he is that going from A to B makes real sense in his movies. He's he's very good with that. What he's not great at is interaction between human beings. Yeah. Honestly, while watching this he, movie, he insists on making love stories the centerpiece of so many of us. It's true. <laughs> it's so stories. crazy. But know. but watching this, like to me, it, it felt like George Lucas. In as yeah. much as it's just like this guy is so technical, he's got a really great eye for so many things. But when it comes down to like getting action, getting like actual performances out of people, it they just don't come. They don't come in this movie. I mean, like they're better in the second one. They're far better acting in the second one, and I think that is mostly because there are better words coming out of their mouth that are not yeah, solely I, written by James Cameron. But um, the acting is still just like it's very stilted. Do Do you think? Yeah. Um. When you compare him to George Lucas, that's a good one because George Lucas, a notoriously bad director. You know, he's once again good big picture guy. Like, good at story, not great at writing, directing, or editing, but somehow, you know. I feel directing. all of this movie, and I'm just like, man, if this if this had, like, a real slam-bang, honest-to-God, great story in it, and it would be just unbelievable. But it's just, like, it's not. So let's get to, the, uh, before we get to the movie itself, because uh, you mentioned it, and I feel like it needs to be mentioned for this one, is... Uh, how did you guys watch this? Because the, I think at the end of the day, this film will have more versions of it out in theaters than any other film in maybe history. <laughs> you talking I'll, about the new, the I'll, second one? Yeah, but I'll with say, the second one, all the different formats. Out of like how the, did you watch out of it? like the twelve at my theater, out of the twelve screens, I do know that ten of them were devoted to different ways to watch Avatar. It was crazy how many screens were devoted to Avatar for a small theater like that. But uh, I watched it just regular. Like nothing special. 2D? Oh, yeah, yeah, 2D. I'm wow. done with 3D for a while. Oh, wow, you didn't watch it in 3D. No, I'm done with 3D for a while. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's the one, well, that's not true. It's one of two movies that I will watch in 3D. Um, is the other one uh, Avatar? The other one is How to Train Your Dragon. That is so good in 3D, man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, strangely, in my mind, I feel like that and Avatar came out pretty close to each other in time. And two of my favorites to watch. But at this point, I don't know, man. I just didn't feel motivated to watch it in 3D this time around. Well, if you do I, see it in 3D, uh, and and my guess is, Sean, it was probably this case for you, because at least everywhere that I kind of look about, it seems to be that if you saw it in 3D, chances are you probably also saw it in high frame rate. Yes. Okay, because you, oh, you would know if you saw. <laughs> yes. I saw, I saw one of the original like not original Hobbit movies, one of Peter Jackson's Hobbit movies mm-hmm. when he was just introducing, like he was a real big proponent of the 60 frames per second, I think. Yeah. And uh, they would have scenes where it would kick in. Like the whole movie wasn't at the faster frame rate, but certain action scenes that would kick in and just like throw my brain for a loop. Like it, it, it was like you're going from watching a movie to watching a, a really well-made soap opera scene or something. <laughs> like the movie. Well, this was the exact same way. 
Uh, okay. the, I did see but, it in three, but it was it was done it was done better it was done yes. better than the Hobbit one was because the Hobbit one yes. you're right it would kind of like speed up it felt like a YouTube video that gets weirdly buffered and then has yes. to catch back up and stuff you didn't get that vibe this time it was no. James Cameron has has a standard and it's it's high up there but I it. Oh, I don't, I don't like it overall. The 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 high frame rate stuff. Like, there's some moments where it's like, oh, that's okay, that's interesting, but most of the time, uh, n- mm, no, no, thank you. I, so, I like the high frame rate for like the CG stuff because that really does, in my opinion, make it a little bit smoother, a little bit more physical. But yeah, if there's a way to do high frame rate CG over regular frame rate film, that'd be great. With the thing, so is, did you is see you this put- in? Did you see this in 4DX? Yes. So I went, I saw this not only in 3D, but 4DX. So three uh, three hours and 10 minutes of being jostled in my seat left and right, which I got to say, I think I really needed in this movie because I think if I had not had that, I would have. Because <laughs> there's some sleep. The, yeah, there's some very peaceful, see? serene, nice moments in this and stuff. And if I wasn't being shook the hell around, <laughs> I might have fallen Here's asleep. What a picture. After three hours of watching this movie in 4DX, I'm picturing you look like the organist in The Simpsons when uh, Bart put <laughs> Itagata DeVita on the music stand. Yeah. <laughs> She's dying there in the last little bit. I'm not going to lie. Like, so here's the thing. Your 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 butt kind of starts giving out, and your, your, your butt kind of starts sliding towards the front of the seat at the end of it, and your back starts kind of going like, oh, lower back was really starting to kind of hurt me at the end of it and everything. But it is a... Uh, uh, I don't know that I'd suggest it, but um, it's a w- it's a way to watch it. And I- I'll at least say this: I got the- I I rang the most out of the Avatar uh, movie that I possibly could have, I believe. So like that yeah. was that was my goal: is I want to go in, giving this a hundred percent. Because like I I think I you know you could listen to the show. I was not super hype on this movie. I wasn't, you know, I think, but I think between the three of us, you were the one looking most forward to this. I kind of, here's the thing. I always want to be surprised. And I, and I I said it before, James Cameron is the, is the Tom Brady of movies. Like you think he might be out and sure shoot. And he will pull something out in the fourth quarter that just like blows your eyeballs back. And yeah, he, he's one of those dudes. You can't count him out. And like, while I think he's put together something of a very interesting technical aspect uh for this movie uh, and is leaps and bounds above the story wise for the first one to which i almost think let's pretend that first movie doesn't even really bloody exist i mean we you don't you almost don't even need it that's not true almost i, almost. I think you but need it. but i think uh, well here's also some of the problem i think that uh that i think kind of we'll get into it as things go on a little bit later but like uh, uh oh, well i'll get into it at another point sorry <laughs> Don't, I don't want to. I don't want to get down that road just now. Okay, uh, I will say that. Um, I, I will say that it seems like people, when it comes to James Cameron, do kind of like forget some of the stuff that he's done. Uh, myself included in that because I read a couple of poorly written articles that made it sound like his last two movies that he made were Titanic and Avatar. And, you know, he, he has worked a little bit since then, right? I mean, I'm correct that he, like, he was the guy that did Alita Battle Angel. Yeah, I mean, he's producing. He produced it, yeah. Okay, I thought he directed it. Okay, so he maybe. He was going to forever in a well, day, and then it Oh, got so maybe Avatar was the last it. thing he directed. Yeah. I really thought he directed uh, the Alita thing. I'm, he I'm might really have done, way. he might have done some doc thing that. I yeah, mean, I that feels, it feels like that second documentary uh, where he's going into the Marianas Trench. That feels like it might have come after, but I might be wrong. Yeah, but you know what? I'll give them credit if they want to say, "Well, we were talking about narrative films." So, yeah, so, yeah maybe I'm film the one who has egg upon my face yet again. Yeah, it's, yeah, his, <laughs> egg upon my face. <laughs> uh, but yes, you, you, yet again, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird because this movie's really long and yeah. a lot happens, but I feel like we're starting to struggle to talk because, about because uh, here's the thing. Ultimately, in this movie, as in with the first Avatar, like like in Sean, you said it beautifully. James Cameron has uh, maybe I think it was Sean. Uh, I'll give credit to him because screw Bruce. Um, Whoa! This uh, <laughs> I say that with love, but the, the <laughs> once again the art the art of James Cameron saying nothing over a three hour period is kind of graceful. 
the the amount of things that he doesn't say but yet says so many words that yes. this movie is is kind of astounding. We have three hours to get a, a, a message across. That's just okay. It's like, hey, be, be, be better about the environment. It, I'll tell <laughs> and, you, it's and he nice. He sort of struggles to even stay on that track all the way through. <laughs> and it's fine. Listen, I'll take this. This felt like less of an after school lesson than the first movie did. The first movie felt like it was preaching to me a lot more than this one. And I don't, you know, oh, entertain okay. me and throw in a lesson, but don't preach to me. That's what I, that was definitely the biggest criticism that I recall it getting, but also I don't know if it had more of it than this movie or what we would refer to as our, different approach to entertainment since that first movie has come out that it we're just more used to it than we were then that's possible yeah anyway just just something to throw out there yeah i mean you might be right there bruce i i you know i this is one of those movies also where uh, like i can i adam you nailed it that i can't stand uh i i, I can't stand monkey boy i hate him um, okay, so let's let's talk about Spider there. <laughs> well, but hold on a second because I want to play a more fun game. <laughs> oh boy, I'm I'm up for it. So, Adam, can I guess what your least favorite character in this movie is? Oh, please, uh, Sigourney Weaver's kid. Honestly, I thought I was really gonna hate that character, and I kind of like I was almost more intrigued of Sigourney Weaver's acting. Because like sometimes she would pop out, and then other times mm-hmm. she would really kind of disappear into it. And I, I kind of dug it, and I was just like, and it also took me a minute to understand that that was actually her. Like, yeah, I, I, I didn't, didn't I didn't even put first. it together. I didn't even put it together till the character was talking to Sigourney Weaver live, and I was were, like, oh, it's the same person. Oh, okay. The, there were a couple of line deliveries. Like, I think I'm with you. Once I caught on to that, it was Sigourney Weaver. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of line deliveries that felt like Sigourney not really doing anything to disguise her voice. Yeah, you know what and, I mean? just, but just yeah, but some of the other kid stuff, I was I was surprised and like and didn't get on my nerves. And like, I thought the like the littlest one was cute. You know? Yeah, she is cute. So like all that, all that, all that worked uh, surprisingly worked for me. Let, I didn't me really guess. hate any of the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, although yeah, they go don't ahead have and different bra- personalities. Yeah, guess Bruce. Guess his least favorite. Jermaine Clement. I like. I question why he was there. I like the guy. <laughs> I know why he was there. I, I know why he was there. <laughs> He's buddies with them, I suppose. Because no, he no, lives no, no, in no, New no. Zealand, and they no. filmed in New Zealand. Well, and this is the real reason. <laughs> There's why. only five actors in New Zealand. Is that what I'm the, to understand? This is the real reason why. Is that because? Uh, Sam Worthington's uh, American accent is so bad <laughs> that they were like, let's get somebody whose American accent is even worse. And we can go see <laughs> it could be worse. They could have got uh, uh, what's his name? Gerard Butler to do his cop accent. That's why I, the, I it's bad, even, but I love it. I didn't even get that. Jermaine Clement was, was trying to do an American accent <laughs> until like, maybe like, like the third scene up. Oh, was like, wait a oh, minute. He's, he's pretending he's American in this. Oh, See, I didn't realize that. As soon as he that. popped up, I said to my wife, you know, we're watching the movie together. I said, that American guy looks just like Jermaine Clement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, so, what are, so, Adam, is, is that, is that your least favorite character in this movie is Jermaine Clement's character? I mean, I, again, I question why he was there, but I don't like. But actually, you don't outwardly hate him. I don't outwardly I hate him. I thought the marine him. biologist telling the hunter not to hunt on his own ship would get under Adam's skin his, somehow. Yeah, his, me too. I, I don't know why his buddy, the gunner, I think I dislike him more. Okay, because he's the one I thought you'd identify with, Adam. Yeah, uh, that me guy, too. That guy's kind of. I did like how that gun reloaded, though. I thought that yeah, was that was super awesome. sweet. I was like, "Whoa, never seen anything like that." That before. was awesome, and I do. I and I do like the fact that he he reminds me of Tin Tin's buddy. Oh, <laughs> the the drunk guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who? I mean, I feel like I still. No, it's Spider. It's Spider. I hate Spider. Is it really? We yeah. both hate the same person. I hate Spider. I, I, I too hate Spider Man. What? Um, so I guess we can say, or let's discuss whether or not we can say that, like, the Jungle Boy is not only in an archetype, but an archetype that probably should go away unless you absolutely have to have. Agreed. Because I'm trying Agreed. to think of, uh, even though they're not all technically Jungle Boys, I'm just thinking back, like the the kid in uh, Jungle uh, to Matt- Jungle. <laughs> the, no, the, the kid in, in the road warrior, uh, you know, yeah. that kid in the road warrior, he, yeah. he's a, anno- he didn't hold up with time. Like at the time when I was a kid, I thought it was cool, but he doesn't yeah. hold up with time. 
Also, like I'm trying to think of other people that Jungle Boy here, Jungle Spider reminds me of. Like that that weird wasn't there like a weird jungle boy on Land of the Lost? Yeah, he looks like one of the like he looks like a Land of the Lost extra, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I do not understand what's going on with this. Why are you making this 24 year old actor run around like he's 10? I, I don't get it. Get the I, and like pants. it's the most yeah, exactly. Get get the guy some pants for the love of everything. Uh you're you're not an Avi. I get it. You're with these and again. Okay. All right. Let's 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 unwrap this do you, baby do you a little guys, bit. Do you guys know who Luke Perry's son is? No. Okay. His name is Jack Perry, okay, and okay. he's a professional wrestler who uses the ring name Jungle Boy. And I'm telling you, I t- like when he's talking about you know he says something how you can't pick who your father is. And my wife says, who's his father? Because, you know, we didn't remember the first one. I told her it was Luke Perry, and she was believing me for just a minute. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I thought that this might have been his son playing Jungle Boy, too. You know what the craziest part is? Is uh, Bruce's family's never going to know when he's lost it. <laughs> that is sad. That you know is what very I'm saying? Sad. Like, they're not going to know that, like, he's slipping away because they're just that like, really that's sad. just what dad does. Uh, you I'll know, I get away with it for a while. I have a friend who watched after her grandmother and her grandmother was in her nineties and just completely out of her mind. And the problem was, was that she still looked like she was in her like fifties or even, even sixties, like early sixties. Like she looked great for her age. And so she just came off as just absolutely insane instead of somebody (laughs) who was 90 years old. And no one knew what to do with her. And I think that's where Bruce is headed. Yeah, we're 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 veering around the corner as soon as we can. Uh, I'll enjoy it more than they will. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> How will I know? It'll be great. <laughs> It'll be a blast. Uh but okay, so here's part of the the thing that like I I I love Hollywood because they're the most hilarious people in the entire world. Because they will they will complain and and bitch and moan about one thing and then deliver you something that is entirely opposite of what you know most of them would probably end up claiming. This James Cameron has made white people the center of all of this stuff. Yes, again, it's just yes. it's quite unbelievable. So I didn't think go, it was oh, even possible to make a movie that's mostly about aliens a white savior story. It really it still is. That's it's. If you look back at the first one, like he's literally in the Jesus pose, like it's it's really like Matrix three level kind of bad yeah. uh, going through all of this stuff. So basically, at the end of the movie, all you have to do is wish and pray really hard and you can be one of the natives. You're good. Like you I've got to we can I've make them up you and you can just have a thing. And guess what? You're one of them now. They are accepted. And you are amongst our highest spider people. Is the future spider is the future of their clan. I, I've got to tell you guys, I am so thrilled with the way this is this is shaking out because I was certain that I was just going to have to remain quiet throughout this entire episode because uh, I don't like I, as like Avatar itself. I'm like it's fine, you know. Like I don't hate it. I don't love it. I outwardly hate this movie. <laughs> I hate <laughs> Avatar too. I hate it. Uh, I hate I hate Monkey Boy. I hate the fact that. Uh, status quo by the end of this movie is almost exactly the same as when we started. Yeah, this is this is a, a Martez story. sisters of of avatars. It is it it really is like, like I said, paper thin storytelling. It's 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 remarkable to me, and like and there are things that I re- I thought were were really cool. Like I I love the the fight sequence at the end of the movie. I think that's really great. Yep. I think I, I, I like that he builds up the world even more that like, you know, if you are uh, if you are an avatar in other parts of the world, then you're going to look different. I, I think that's cool, too. Uh, but but my God, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I don't just, care. Just, just think we get to see three more versions of the Navi before he's done with all these movies. Yeah, it's just Navi, like, like that's what I meant. To like say. that's. Yeah, is that what we're doing in the next one? Then we're just going to the another planet that's another thing and like it's the fire planet. It'll be the way of fire and there'll be orange skin. There'll be yeah, there'll be a fire thing and then there'll be an ice he, thing. I'm it's, telling you, he's trying to do his own Star War here because instead yeah. of every planet is its own thing, every group of Navi live in a, a a sort of monolithic landscape. But it's all on the on Pandora at different places. Wait till we get to the island that's just a city. <laughs> yeah, yes. it's it's not too far off. I mean, I, I wouldn't so, put it past. 
I was talking to my wife about this after we saw the movie. Just the two of us, our kids. They they're like, thanks, but no thanks. We we wow. Like, well, them uh, kids are smart. Some of my boy. kids might not have even been alive when the first one came out. I don't know oh, that any true. of them saw it in the theater and remember it, so they have no vested interest. Taping all but, those three uh, D we goggles to an infant's head. <laughs> And I was telling my wife, how I thought, well, the next one is going to be fire. And she said, OK, so the first one was the Native Americans he had to save. The second one, the Pacific Islanders he had to save, which, you know, with my wife's background, that was a little close to home. So she sure. said, what's next? And I think it's got to be Africa. We got to see him finally show us what he thinks an, an a tribal African Navi looks like in, in the next movie. Oh, boy. Oh boy! I mean, I don't know. Like here's because man, like I said, paper thin story. Uh, the Navi say what you will about is it a Plains Indian? Is it a, a more of an Eastern tribe? I'm not going to get into that argument, but I'll tell you that that was definitely he filming in New Zealand, and those are definitely Maori. The uh, yeah Maori. I, I apologize for not pronouncing it correctly, but the definitely Maori folk are yeah. who the the water Navi are. I mean, they're sticking their tongue out like they're doing a haka. They got the face tattoos like. Yeah, it's, it's like yeah, we're we're not we're not hiding the puck on this one. Man, so good. <laughs> we're going to be more Moana than Moana could be. Yeah, <laughs> which is why Jermaine Clement is in this movie. Now it all makes sense. Oh, <laughs> now, shiny! Twentieth Century Fox, owned by Dis. I'm telling you, <laughs> it all makes sense now. Do you did did, did you find yourself looking at your watch? No, no, I couldn't. I didn't have a watch on, but boy, I wanted to. You know how like you're watching something on Netflix and occasionally you'll pause it to see how much longer you got? Yeah. I was trying hard to pause that movie screen a couple times. <laughs> I'll say this, like my Jocelyn about like it, it It was the thing that saved me. I'll be 100 percent like it was yeah. it was a three hour ride. And like this is the only other time and I've seen like I've done that. I've done the 40 eh, a handful. We'll call it maybe half a dozen times. Uh, this is the only one outside of that first Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters one that I saw, where at the end everybody clapped, like it was a ride. Uh. <laughs> but like, this, Did, because the other one was like it was a really good experience as far as or like they the just 40 happy they survived. But that may have been part of it too, because it was a it was a hell of an adventure going uh, just all over the place and everything. But but it, how, how it were the how were the people? How were the people in your theater? Were they like, yes, this is awesome? Were they like laughing at the funny parts? Were they clapping at the like the big parts, the um, action parts? I think everybody was everybody was engaged, but like it the 40X wears on you. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, you know, you get into like once you're past hour two, you're like, all right, here we go. Like you you thank God when there's a when there's like some peaceful moments and stuff where you can like you know reach down onto the floor and pick up your popcorn and go like okay couple couple bites of this before I get you know thrown into Jocelyn. outer space again. <laughs> so, the, I like that you have popcorn just flying everywhere during the big fight at the end. Dude, I, there's I, some I rem- moments where like you are really holding on to stuff because they will like, they smash you around in it. Yeah, it's like but I, I wish there could be a seatbelt in this. I can't remember which movie. I really wish I could remember which movie it was that I saw in 40X, but it was something where I was like, well, I did that. Never doing that again. And and, and it certainly wasn't a four hour long movie. I had the smell of like the fake, fake outside and stuff in my nose hairs because it gives you like, uh, there's a lot of like fake. And that's the to, to me half of the stuff is like bro if you could like th- if do all that stuff silently and I didn't hear those things going off it would it would help the illusion a little bit more you know but I when I can, I've ever done for when I can hear that when I can hear that you're you're pumping in some gas like I mean I suppose it's good that I'm not <laughs> dying but at the same time too like if all of a sudden I just smelled grass as opposed to going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Three, two, one. Crass smell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, it's a li- it's I, I a little I've much sometimes. The is it called D box where the seats move but they don't spray stuff at you? Right, D box like, is just movement. Yeah, that's all that I've ever done. This is movement plus you're getting uh, some water thrown at you. Some- <laughs> yep. Plus a hooker slaps you in the face if you're into that. Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, they slap your wallet. That's for sure. You really feel like you've been abused if yes, that's the I thing bet. that you're it's into. Only, it's only twenty seven dollars for a matinee. Yo, no, it was yeah for like two tickets. It was like fifty five bucks. <laughs> no kidding. Ouch. And that was that was that was the matinee cheap price. If when you're seeing you it, you go to Carowinds for that ten forty in the morning, <laughs> which is also a heck of a way to wake up. By the way, 
<laughs> Wish I'd been with Smash. you. Smash! All right, there's your you know a little bit of whiplash, but that's good for you. That's what cinema's all about. Um, the music in this uh, is practically non-existent as far as I'm concerned. Just like the first movie, I was listening back to that soundtrack, just going like, D- "What do I remember about the soundtrack? Do I anything as far as music goes?" And no, it's nothing. It's all just a like bunch just, of just blech. just like lazy symphonic stuff. I I can't even tell. Like it doesn't feel like there's a lot of like you know no real it's worse. theme work or anything. It's just nothing. It's wor- It's worse than that, man. It's like that new age crap that you get like if you go to a day spa. Like oh, I got it now because I have <laughs> I have one of those albums on my phone that'll kick in and play sometimes. Some Man, if they played some on. straight up Enya in, in this, I might have liked it even more. Enya would be way better than what they played. Oh. Yeah, they played the stuff like when they're trying to sell you crystals afterwards. What also, you- I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it that they're still using. Have either of you guys seen the avatar sketch on saturday night live no. i have not i feel like i it, not there was an old one wasn't there it, this one is from just a few years ago and it might even have been last year oh. and it's uh uh the guy from la la lands and gosling. uh what's what's his name ryan gosling ryan ryan gosling so the entire sketch it's a pre film bit which make which is the only good stuff on saturday Night live these days it seems yeah the, the it's a pre film bit where he, where his character is so angry with the people who made avatar because the font is papyrus <laughs> and it makes him so mad and it makes him crazy and and he's at his psychiatrist's office and she's like is this all coming up now because they're making a sequel and he's like they're making a sequel <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I couldn't believe how tone deaf it is that they do nothing to change the font of this. It's all <laughs> still in papyrus. Even though there is a, a very funny sketch on Saturday Night Live that you can see on YouTube called, I think it's called Papyrus, actually. And there are a lot of like uh, great font designers would be happy to help you out with something. Oh, original. my Lord. Are you kidding me? We're We're in a glory day of fonts, man. Yeah, it's unbelievable what you can get out there and like, and that people just are making and saying, "Here, have at." You know that the guy, according to an HBO documentary I watched, the guy who created Fortune really likes to make his own fonts. Like that's his hobby. I like how you called it, Chan. That's great. Uh, so, it, well, <laughs> well, hold on. Hold on. Let's hear what David also has to say. <laughs> Avatar. Avatar. Uh, speaking of the, the of the avatars, um, one David of the Chen. one of the writers of this movie, uh, Shane Salerno. Uh, mm-hmm. So his people need to get on his IMDb to update it. Number one, your picture looks like it was taken in about 1997. Mwah, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but like in his little bio there, uh, Shane Salerno is co screenwriting of the forthcoming Avatar Two, 2020. Was when they were nice. 20 Avatar 3 in 2021, Avatar mm-hmm. 4 in 2024, and Avatar 5 in 2025. Do you think they'll stick to that schedule? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to wager a no on that one, but I, w- okay. I want to wait to see I what the Vegas I missed a few are. movies along the way. <laughs> so, uh, done Avatar without me, Ma. Pushed back just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me ask you this. Um, was it something in this movie that they made Kate Winslet hold her breath underwater for seven minutes long? And if so, what in the world was it? Because I sure shoot and didn't see it. And I don't think that we should try to kill this woman <laughs> on account of anything that I saw in this film. It was a practical joke. They're like, hey, Kate, we, <laughs> you know, we're doing this all CGI, but to do the right acting, you need to put your head in the tank of water for seven minutes. There was no giant long take or nothing or just, I don't Not know. Not to mention it's CGI. Like, like she didn't even have to be on the same continent, did she? I don't think so. But like, yeah, no, she's in the pool. <laughs> she's in a pool and everything, and it's like, like they couldn't Weird CGI out some like a breathing apparatus. You need to make her hold her breath for seven minutes. I think that's My a little, God. especially when you're, you know, listen, you're <laughs> about the age of forty. You're gonna have C- a problem doing that. Instead of CGI and uh, Kate Winslet, how about you CGI a pool, and then like she's just sitting in a room <laughs> and it looks like she's in the pool. <laughs> nah, nah. Listen, that's gonna. I don't know. It's just. Can we can we also talk about something else, which is that the 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 CGI in this movie, of course, is 
the the best CGI in the world. Like, I mean, it's it's just there's there's some really top notch looking stuff. I mean, like it's really perfect frame it's, stuff, it's, notwithstanding. Right down to the like the the body hair on some of the people when you're when you're up close to them, it's just like wow, Beautiful. that's amazing. However, there is something very nightmarish about when you're seeing the Navi up close to, uh, on their face and they. Sp- smile and they have real people teeth <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's give you a little first version of sonic the hedgehog flashback in a strange way a and, little bit and they're almost and they're too nice they're too nice for, for too these nice pe- for native people who maybe don't have toothbrushes you know like you're gonna lose some teeth along and the not, way not, yeah, fights. it's not you only don't have, you don't have bridges if you're living out in the wild it's, it's not just that like, like they're kind of you know more per- pearlescent if you will but oh. they're also very straight Straight, yes, straight and they're, clean. They're remarkably everything. Remarkably straight. I'm yes. just like my word. No, that's not. That's come on now. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe it's just. Uh, I know somebody's out there going. The well, if these tree. are your complaints, then I guess the movie's pretty good. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, maybe it's the magic tree. It straightens their teeth. They plug their tail into it, their ponytail <laughs> into it, and sends a jolt of electricity, and their teeth straighten. But hey, listen, not for nothing. But that is James Cameron's kind of resolve to just about anything that you need to be doing in this. <laughs> yeah. You plug yourself in like a USB cable to whatever the hell's around. Be it a dragon thing, be it this this tree and over here, you, another person. As a guy who's ridden a few horses in my day, it would be a whole lot easier if you just plug into them and control their brain. I'm Dude, brain. like seriously, yeah. If you could just kind of like make them just <laughs> I do didn't what ride you them want. all at once. I only rode them one at a time. <laughs> I thought it was like a chuck wagon. I'm a rock yeah, humble saddle. brag. I'm like a circus performer, you know, that's like standing atop four horses as it runs around the ring. <laughs> Can you do that thing when you whistle and the and the horse comes up and you can jump on him? <laughs> yes. The uh uh the other the the other thing the other thing that I was wondering about this movie is that when uh were, were, were either of you surprised in any way with the two shocking events that happen in this? One is is learning <laughs> learning that uh uh spider is actually his kid were, were you surprised at all by that i wanted to die surely not in fact i was so not surprised by it i thought everybody else already knew and i was just figuring it out <laughs> and the other and the other one is did any of you did were either of you surprised by the boys in the hood ending of this movie as well <laughs> wow what what a way to put that. I never made that connection, but now I, I'm surprised. I wasn't when I saw it. <laughs> the second the second that the, you start learning that the, it's the younger boy who's all the trouble, you know that he's going to be the big hero and that the, the older brother, who doesn't have a whole lot going on in this movie, is going to yeah. be dead by the end. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I Like, yeah, no surprise. But then when if you if you tell me that I could have seen that as a rip off of Boys in the Hood, that would have surprised me. I wish I was more <laughs> familiar with Boys in the Hood when I saw this. Here's the thing, though. Like, I mean, I'm glad that, like, we can kill a character. At least that makes me feel like there's some stakes involved in something. Yeah. Like, you know, the fact that you killed, a, you know, a child in this film, oh. that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. But also it's like. But now, oh, again, man. you don't paper care about the story, kid because they haven't, you know. Yeah, and, you know, paper-thin story, a trope for a story on this level is somebody has to die and somebody that's close enough that you feel for the main character, but it can't be the main character necessarily. So s- still pretty, yeah. Of course, they had the guts to have somebody die, but that's also kind of a minimum requirement for something yes. like this if you're trying yes. to be taken seriously. Yes. Like I, I read a bunch of books called writing fiction for dummies once upon a time. And they all say like, you got to make sure you kill somebody. There's more than one book called that. <laughs> well, there was only one until I bought so many copies of it. And they said, well, we better write this guy another one. Cause he's clearly not getting it. <laughs> We're going to write an addendum. <laughs> I, I, one time I let my buddy borrow um, my book, save the cat. And, and I told him uh, right ahead of, uh, ahead of time too. I was like, listen, uh, this only works if you've already written a script, like, like it helps you with your script that is already written. And he hadn't done that. And then he, and he knew nothing about the author in the first place. And I was like, you need to look him up because <laughs> you just need to look him up. And so he hadn't read it yet. And he looked the guy up and he was like, this guy wrote blank check the movie and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> that is who you're taking your advice from. And so I much said, crap is like that. 
And, and, and that's literally what I told them. I was like, look, just because a guy uses really bad lumber doesn't mean that he doesn't know how to make a house. It's just that the lumber he chooses to make that house with is all wrong. Yeah, I love that analogy, man. And that's kind of that's kind of what it feels like with I've, I've this movie. Of, I've thought about buying a copy of that book, writing for fun and profit, and then they cross out the fun. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's by the fantastic by, book. Yeah, it's well, a great book. I was going to cross out the profit part too, and then that would describe me just writing. <laughs> just writing. <laughs> I don't enjoy it, and I don't get paid, but I keep doing it for some reason. <laughs> that's from the dude from the state who's made like a billion yeah. dollars writing now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. Uh, Stephen Lang, I, I thought he was a he he was he was a better actor this go around, but I just again I I don't care all of all of the, every military person James Cameron writes is the same. Yes, they're all the same. Yes. Um. Again, I will go back just because I want to punch again and because it, it's fun and accurate. Edie Falco is just atrocious. It's yes. So she's the worst. So bad. I like. I hope it's just like they're buddies or something, you know, they're friends. Can you imagine getting the note? You're, you're Edie Falco. You're getting the note. Uh, listen, um, so you're going to be drinking coffee, but it's going to be with the robot hand, not your actual hand, which would make <laughs> it a thousand times easier to drink the coffee. <laughs> yes. yes. That part bothered me so badly. Oh my God. It's so, it's so maddening. There's a lot like the rest I, I of the movie was spot on. And then that just pulled me out. But then You're again, but think about this though, like in that same sort of vein, cause you know, you had to have a coffee cup that'll be able to do that kind of nonsense at the same exact time. Where are we getting all these, you know, Navi sized guns? Mm. No one talks well, that's about for the that. avatars like, to use. Those are made. Weren't those originally made for the avatars? I mean, maybe, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. They just seem to have a lot of abnormally large guns lying around. <laughs> there also wasn't a ton of avatars. Like there wasn't a lot you know of what? them in the first one. But I mean, they, you're right. There wasn't a ton of avatars in the first one, but I guess I'm thinking in this one, they brought a whole avatar squad back, even though they're not technically avatars, they're clones, but boy, we're really getting some tomato, tomato but stuff he there. Was, we got boy, to oh boy. He's trying to <laughs> like, God. it felt like he was really trying to write himself out of this pickle that he wrote himself into in this first movie. It was like, Oh shucks. What do I do with this? And just kind of like, and he came up with enough of a way and at least he, he had other people in on it. So you could point know to th them if, if things go bad. I know that you're not a huge Stephen Lang fan, but I, I love Stephen Lang and, and I, and he was to me, even though, even though it, it is ridiculous what he's doing in the first Avatar movie, he is my favorite part of that first movie, and and just the the absolutely bonkers performance that he gives in that movie is just the best. It's just the best, and and the and, and well, I'll get to it later. But he's to have him back, and to have him back in a way that isn't ridiculous like Wonder Woman 2, bringing, bringing back Chris Pine. Uh -huh. Like, this is a far better way to do that. It, it wasn't horrible, but like... I, mean, <laughs> I do wish the Wishmaster had shown up, though, and he wished back. <laughs> oh, the gin. But like, I'm listening, I'm like, I'm looking at this character, and I'm like, you know who, like, I'm trying to figure out who we could get that would have been, you know, better. Because you could put anybody in that thing because it's another person that we haven't met before, you know? And yeah. motion capture and all that nonsense. Yeah. Chris Cooper, I think, would have been amazing in this role. Just because somebody that would just have that kind of I just of don't like, believe I don't believe him as a as like a butt kicking military military guy. Like I I, I, I think of him as a guy who's who's past his prime yes. a little too much for that now. Again, yes. we're looking at I mean, this is mostly voice casting here is because we're just putting another face on it at this point. Because that obviously wasn't Stephen Lang. And, and uh, guys, I'll ask you this. Is there a tipping point to how many key characters can be CGI at which you should just make it a Pixar movie? You know, that's that's a good point, Bruce, because one of the things that I kept thinking about watching this movie is I'm I'm literally looking at nothing. Like, I, I, I thought that really, several times watching this movie. It really bothered me that I feel like I'm watching entirely animated scenes and something that is framed as a live action film. Yeah. I, I don't know. People might say get over it and maybe I should get over it, but it just bothers me. Like there's just, can't you do something with some real actors and some real acting or else just go pure on voice. But the mocap stuff gets weird. 
Well, I don't know. At least I, I will say this. I think the mocap stuff and everything is what really is giving us these great, amazing performances and stuff. And they have been even since the first Avatar, when you watch back that 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 first one and how um, Zoe Saldana is just murdering that movie. She's like the only person who's doing an amazing job in that first movie. She has less to do in this one, unfortunately. Uh, but she's but she's still really good. But like that's that acting with that, it is it's astounding of how much of a difference it truly makes in making you believe. And when you've got somebody that can obviously have the money to put behind all the CGI that then is going to be laid on top of that, like James Cameron does, you really get the best of the best. And but it is but it's still it's so bizarre because when you like you said, when you get a human on screen there, all of a sudden it just it all breaks down and goes funky. It just looks weird. It's like, oh, it's yeah, it, it, it's not. It's, it's not those, really re- real. It's all fake. It's one of those things. It's like the inverse of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like there, you have cartoon cameos. Here, it's almost like you have human cameos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. And, and, Did, and it feels like nothing's built. Nothing was like you know, kind of made for this. And like, I just, I, I'm it's curious. a real episode one feeling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you: When it comes to Stephen Lang's character. So he is now full-time avatar person, right? Yeah. It, would he be able to jump into one of those, one of them, their tubes? And let's say there's a human being in a tube on, on earth. Would he be able to j- jump his, his mentality into a, into a person that doesn't have a person in it? Cause it's already, uh, it's already on the avatar planet. I don't have any idea how to answer that. And frankly, I, d- I doubt James the, the Cameron science does on either. this movie. And I'm a guy who can be pretty forgiving, but the science on this movie is really like, please don't pay too much attention. Yeah. Doing. <laughs> like the last movie and this one have just a lot of, eh, shut up science. Like yeah. kind of things where it's like, yeah, no, but none of this really makes any sense. And like, and, and, and even like real even, story stuff too. Why, why would you even use an avatar? If you're now completely capable of creating clones. That, yeah. that will follow your orders. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, weird yeah. name for a movie that, you know, we're going to make five of them, but we're ditching the avatars halfway yeah, through the Yeah, exactly. One. That's another one where you're just like, okay, you, you get another like, another Star Wars where it's like, oh, you came up with all of these at one time, did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. sure. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Pops. <laughs> tell, me another, tell me another good story. My word. You're killing it today, Portress. So, James Cameron. How old would we are we saying he is? He's the a 60s, boomer. Seventies. Yeah, he's sixty five, seventy. Yeah. Okay, because well, rich people tend to live for freaking ever, so yeah. he'll probably be around for a long time. But I'm going to ask sort of a macabre question. Let's just say something happened to James Cameron. Do they finish Avatar three? Well, I'll tell you right now that 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 plan is already in place. His two assistants know exactly his wishes and his orders, and they're going to go through with it anyway because. The way that Cameron described it was he doesn't want to have ha- what happened to him, what happened to Frank Herbert, the guy who wrote Dune. What he happened? wants to be a Robert Jordan and not a Frank Herbert. Yes. I'm not sure what I'm not a literary guy. Well, Robert Jordan had someone to carry on for him. Ah. And, and 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 gave Frank them the, and gave them the plans in place before. <laughs> Long before he died. And Frank Herbert wound up with a book that has a cover that's a little girl's face on a worm. So different strokes for different folks. Yeah, and his and his son ended up taking over, right? But his son yeah. isn't. His son is him. not a writer, though. Yeah. But I think I think even James Cameron like felt like before the before the movie came out, like weeks ago, he even kind of I felt like he even realized that like maybe this might not be the biggest thing in the world, and like it kind of came to him and like they've been talking about like obviously sequels and stuff this leaves itself off just like the last movie and the pretty much the exact same framing where like open eyeballs and cut then we'll be going into the next film but this is i mean it's not in is it in china yet i think it is because china's gonna love this movie i think it is and i mean should we talk box office adam i mean we we can it's a little bit because we're on sunday here yeah, I feel like we're wrapping up the the episode. So I, I would like to say, like, Sean, first day, like Friday plus previews, I think it was like over 100 million worldwide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So 
that's pretty good. Um, the weird thing is I saw headlines by two different outlets released at about the same time, which one says Avatar uh, ruling the box office. The other one said Avatar going to fall short of projections. So it's another one of those where it's like, well, sounds yes. like Dwayne the Rock Johnson has got well, a little. When he made it, I mean, he gives an interview totally straight face and he says, you know, people say it has to be the most, uh, the biggest box office ever to break even, but I think if it could be as low as third and still break even. Like, that is honestly what he said with a straight face. So the projections <laughs> must be huge. But the people saying it's underperforming, I don't think they know that the first Avatar only made $25 million in that same time period. Yeah, okay, so let me give you a, a worldwide box office mojo right now. First weekend for Avatar, $434 million. Sure. Way more than I made this weekend. Just a touch. Just a touch. Uh, it listen, the movie's going to be big. And even I said, like, even if this, even if the movie was was terrible, which the movie's not. For all rights, the movie is better yeah. than the first one is. It just it's going to get repeat viewers. Uh, yeah. yeah, there'll be some people that'll repeat. I don't think they're going to repeat nearly as much as they did with the first Avatar film. I I wonder what the second movie will do. I think I think it will have a bigger audience than I would have met if you would have put me and, you know down to bet. I would well, not have guessed that people family would want friendly, to see the next one. We got two big family friendly movie weekends coming up too, so it's the right kind of movie. Yeah, to do well and for three and, weeks. and and I mean, you look at something like you know, like that last Jurassic World movie also broke a billion dollars. Like it's going yeah, it to break terrible. a billion. Yeah. It, it is god awful. And so I, you know, this one's going to, it's going to, the only thing it may have a going against it's literally just the amount of times it can be screened boys and girls. Cause it's just, yeah, that's it's way why too I'm kind of, su- kind of surprised that James Cameron didn't go about 95 to a hundred minutes on it and get that extra <laughs> 20 million this weekend. Here's the thing though. Like I said, the whole first hour of the movie is practically a, a previously on avatar yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. they, they could take that entire thing out and make this just a two hour movie. It probably would have cooked along real well and like maybe moved a couple of action set pieces around or just, something. Just, just give everyone a three page pamphlet to read, to get caught up as <laughs> Yeah. Know. Like we should get like playbills and stuff that just be that, that like, you know, give us like at least four or five pages and all the bull crap that, you know, James Cameron makes up, which is again, it's, it's so hilarious about how like we're it's, the idea of everything is like, listen, we it's it's analogous to you know indigenous peoples and all of this kind of stuff, but yet you've made all of it up in your own in your own way. You've made your own languages and everything. So like, I I don't know, just it, all of it seems very strange to me. Uh, but it's here's the thing: it's it's what James Cameron does. He brings this level at least of special effects filmmaking that there's just nobody else that does anything quite like that. Even if all the other stuff falls apart, even if all the dialogue is, is lame, which it's better this time than it was last time, but it's still, it's still not great, but boy, it still is something to look at. And that he certainly hasn't lost that step as far as filmmaking goes. And and for some reason, I feel like James Cameron is, is really, really uh, into to blue flesh because he doesn't put clothes on them. No, nah, he likes it. There's something weird about that. You know what's he, he grew okay. up with a Smurf fetish? And that's 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 well. You, you know how you know how uh, there's the people who think that Disney's Robin Hood started the whole um, that whole fetish of plushies, like furries, like furries. Yeah, sorry, okay, furries. And my guess is, is that this is the movie that 25 years from now, we're going to, we're going to learn like, oh yeah, the only way I could totally get off is if, if, if they're, if they're painted blue. Cause I could imagine these are going to be the first bare butts that some kids see <laughs> and it could just yeah. like imprint on their heads. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to talk about something in the after show. Uh, but Uh-oh. before we do all that, we and and rate this thing. We have to ask ourselves one very important question: Is how this epic James Cameron film relates back one to one with Sylvester Stallone? Why, thank you, Adam. I have a prepared statement. Ooh. Before I get into that prepared statement, let me just say this: This is the first movie in a long time on this show where it was easy to find the Stallone connection, and I am <laughs> grateful. I am grateful. Merry Christmas, Mr. Stallone. I hope this message finds you well. I imagine that you have a more difficult Christmas than most people. I imagine that when you're rich, no one is happy with their Christmas presents. That's the BMW you got me? 
Stephen Lang is an avatar playing the most angry man that's ever lived. And he worked on the 2002 movie, I See You. Now, to me, Stephen Lang is the pinnacle of that guy is in this of any working actor. He's in Tombstone. And Mr. Stallone, if you think he's a piece of garbage in Avatar 2, you should check him out in Tombstone. It's like Kurt Russell said to him, hey, Steve, you mind making your character even more awful? Maybe maybe make him beg for his life and then have him shoot a lady? <laughs> Stephen Lang has been around forever, and he had one heck of a run in 1986 where he had the reoccurring role on the TV series Crime Story, and he was also in 1986 in the movies Band of the Hand and Mine Hunter, or Mine Hunter, Man Hunter, <laughs> which if you're a movie nerd, Mr. Stallone, you already know are awesome. But honestly, in truth, I have no idea if Band of the Hand it still holds up. I'm going to guess it doesn't. Mm. I'm going to guess that it don't because uh, I don't remember the last time anyone talked about that movie ever. And there you have it. This week's Stallone connection is Stephen Lang. Hope to hear from you soon. Your pal. Sweet Chauncey from the internet. Well, here at Hero Movie Podcast, we have our own patented Robin rating system. If you want to go check that out, check it out at reddit.com slash r slash hero movie pod. It's right there at the top of the screen. Bruce, where does Avatar The Way of Water land on the Robin rating system for you? You know, like I said before, it's everybody's buddy, nobody's best friend. It's Miller Lite. Nobody turns it down, but nobody says it's their favorite beer. Um, It's like just skating by tim drake you know it's it's got enough visuals it's got enough spectacle to it it's got enough curiosity around it that uh i'm gonna give it a a low tim drake sean i do not like this movie at all uh i think that the the stuff about them being a family i don't buy any of it i think that it is written by people who know what a family looks like because they they've looked at a Sears catalog but they don't actually know that the way the families actually <laughs> yeah, work. I, I didn't want to mention it but at the same time too I just like I kind of wanted to like I don't we James Cameron's had a, a public life oh my that's all I'm Has saying ever that's all I'll say I'm just saying you see the way that all these blue people get along almost all the time yeah. that's what that's what family is like we we huddle around and hug each other and just hang out <laughs> clearly you have no idea what it's like to be the father of a teenage daughter my word <laughs> so so th- that gets me there's characters in this movie that you don't need at all uh i do love the the spear fisherman uh getting his arm cut off because hopefully <laughs> god fingers crossed I'm really hoping that one of the Avatar movies we're getting, one of these three other Avatar movies we're getting, is just Moby Dick, but with blue people. I'm really hoping for that. (laughs) I'm just hoping they grow a whole new harpoon guy from the hand. I mean, at the same time, too, we basically had Jonah and the whale (laughs) story in this, where it was just like, how many more biblical stories are we ripping off here, Jimmy? You're not not wrong. Uh, But, you know, for me, it is a a very low Damian Wayne, like the lowest Damian Wayne I've ever given something is what I'm giving this movie. I concur, uh, low Damian Wayne as well. Uh, like I, I, I can't. Well, say I don't want to be the it. guy who gave it the highest rating, so I'm changing. Too late! It's too late! It's too late! No, 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 no! It's in stone. Nope. We're oh done. crap! I gotta wait till the year end. Bam, bam, bam. This thing, this thing that we don't, this thing that's just completely something we made up in the first place. <laughs> This no, 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 that's set in stone now. Forget it, forget it, it's in the record. It has been recorded. You can't change it. And the <laughs> funny thing is, is normally we would allow him to change that that grade on the year-end show, but we're not exactly doing it quite the way that we used to, so guess what? That's off the table now, Bruce. Sorry. You're, you're in well, I know that there'll be an asterisk when our friend who keeps track of these things documents this one. Now, someone will do that someday, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, I just I wish I liked it more, but I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would, which I felt like was a victory. Hey, very good for you. Um, yeah, I I didn't walk out disgusted. It was just like okay, it was a film. I I enjoyed it for the for the theme park ride aspect of it. 
it does it did feel like i paid half a half a day's park you know wage to go and uh, get on this one particular ride <laughs> but it was a it was a hell of a decent 3 hour ride and if i paid least, yeah, if you if you think of paying it for it by the minute it was a good choice i mean yeah I, honestly for like 25 bucks for to be jostled around for three and a half hours <laughs> i know a guy who'll do it for half that yeah you know out of the park patreon.com slash wait a minute um <laughs> what anywho uh next <laughs> next week we we're doing, gonna be doing week, something crazy but bruce in the meantime where can we find more of your work on the internet you can go back to youtube i took a couple weeks off you know had stuff going on in the personal life but i'm back i had a uh, review go up i'll have a few more reactions going up and youtube.com slash c slash bruce leslie or use my handle at anime dad on fine youtubes everywhere <laughs> sean uh you can find our other podcast called 30 questions where each week we review some nerdy property and we ask 30 questions of that latest episode of that nerdy property we are on the hiatus we will be back in february with the mandalorian season three Keeping on the high it is. Uh, next week, everybody, we're going to be doing something a little bit different for this year program. Uh, we're going to be talking about our top movies of the year, but not superhero films. No, no, no. We're going to be talking about our top, each of us, our top 10 non-superhero movies that we've seen in 2022. And we want to hear from our Patreon supporters as well. Uh, so all those details would be at patreon.com slash HMP. Uh, for all of that, but uh, yeah, a little, little something different for the kids, yeah, yeah. Sounds I'm ex good. I'm excited. I'm excited because a lot of people do go like, well, you know, obviously this is these aren't the only types of movies that you watch, and no, we, we're we're a varied group. We watched Man, some the crazy stuff. Quick. Yeah, it, it did. Uh, yeah, amazingly so. So even within this next week, I'm probably going to cram a couple more in there just to be like, okay, let's see if I can find any like late entries that are going to be really good. Cool. But uh, so we'll be doing all of that next week. That is it, everybody. Join us next week when we're talking our year end review for Sweet Sean's of Kovacs from the Internet. Bruce Leslie, I'm Adam Porters. Stay super, everybody. Bye, Marty and Evie. Splish, splash, I was taking a bath. Long about a Saturday night. Yeah. A rub dub, just relaxing in the tub. Thinking everything was all right. Well, I stepped out the tub, I put my feet on the floor. I wrapped the towel around me. And in a splish splash, I jumped back in the bath. Well, how was I to know there was a party going on? There was a splishing and a splash, reeling with the feeling, moving and a groove, and rocking and a rolling. Yeah, yeah. Big bang, I saw the whole gang. Splash, I forgot about the bath. I went and put my dancing shoes on, yeah. I was a rolling and a stole, reeling with the feel, moving and a groove, splishing and a splash.